Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As a lot of you might know, if you've watched my MCAT study routine video, I recently took the MCAT, which is the Medical College Admissions Test, and I received my score back a few days ago. I was so happy and relieved with what I got. I wanted to put together a comprehensive guide of how I prepared and what resources really helped me. So link down below, I actually have a written guide that is like 20 pages of just everything that you need to know about the MCAT, what resources I use, etc. And my friend Anuva, who goes to USC, helped me put this together. So check that out. But since it's really long, I'm also making this video just for a summary of my own timeline, um, what worked for me, and there are also things I'm going to be talking about that are not going to be in the document. But even if you are going to click away and just read the guide that I wrote, please, please leave this video running in the background so that the YouTube algorithm pushes this out to people who might find it helpful. Studying for the MCAT is so stressful and I really wanted to get this out there for people who don't really know where to begin, um, who might not have advising at their schools. Also putting it together was really therapeutic for me. I really hope that you guys find it helpful and without further ado, let's get into my slide deck that I prepared for this video on how to score a 520 plus on the MCAT. So just some context on me and what my scientific background was going into this exam. I'm a student at Brown University. Um, I studied for the MCAT for about close to four months um, this past summer, so the summer after my junior year, and then I took the exam in early September. I would say that I have a solid background in my science classes. Um, I did really well in all of my pre-med core classes. Um, I never took any social or psych courses prior to the exam. So in summary, I had completed all of my pre-med core requirements that are tested on the MCAT. I started off with the half-length diagnostic by Next Step, which is now called Blueprint, and I scored about a 505. I started scoring about 511 to 514 on my third party full lengths two months out from my exam and then my full length average was about a 522. But I really want to stress that doing the work in your pre-med classes and really focusing on learning the core concepts will really serve you well when you are preparing for the MCAT and your content review phase will go a lot faster. If you are looking for a video where I give you shortcuts on how to study for the MCAT in a few weeks, this is definitely not the video. This is a three to four month study plan um, and it kind of assumes that you have already a solid background in the sciences and you've taken all your requirements. So if that doesn't describe you or if you want a longer period of studying, um, I would check out the guide because Anuva had actually studied for close to nine months um, on and off because of school. But I want to put that context out there just so you know where I'm coming from um, when I was developing my study plan. Alright, so let's talk first about the basics of the MCAT. So there are four sections on the MCAT and they have common abbreviations that you're going to see on the internet. Um, so the first one is CP, which is chemistry and physics. The next one is CARS or critical reading. And then BB, which is biology and biochemistry. And finally PS, which is psych -soch. I do want to note that these sections are not mutually exclusive, so you might see some biochem in the chemistry section. The exam is administered on the computer, not on paper, as I had thought when I was first starting out studying. Um, so you're going to have a computer with a keyboard and mouse. And you must have all equations memorized, and there are no calculators on the exam. Most of the math is pretty simple. Um, you just need to brush up on things like logarithms for pH calculations and stuff like that. Given the public health circumstances, I took the shortened exam, which was 5 hours and 45 minutes. But the normal length of the exam that you are probably going to take is um, 6 hours and 15 minutes of testing time and I believe 7.5 hours total um, given breaks and the tutorial time. To go briefly over timing, there are 95 minutes for non-car sections and there are 59 questions each. So if you break down the timing, um, you should finish about 20 questions for every 30 minutes, which leaves a few minutes for checking at the end. It's really important to leave some buffer time at the end when you're practicing and timing your full lengths. If you don't leave any time at the end, even if you do have enough time to answer the questions, you might panic and that affects your performance at the end of each section. And then for CARS, you have 90 minutes to do 53 questions. So the general rule of thumb for this is you want to spend three to four minutes 
um, reading the passage and really absorbing it. Um, I don't recommend reading the questions before you read the passage. And then you want to spend about one minute for each question pertaining to that passage. So ultimately, the timing works out to be about 10 minutes per passage. Speaking from personal experience, you really do not want to go over 10 minutes per passage. Just skip answers that you're not sure of because you don't want to be left at the end skimming through the last passages and quickly answering the questions. Finally, the score turnaround is about one month. This is really important for when you're scheduling when you're going to take the MCAT, just have that score turnaround in mind. So I'm going to talk about the main resources that I used. Um, I used the Kaplan book set, except for the Cars and Behavioral Sciences books. Um, the edition really doesn't matter as long as it's after 2015. And the Reddit psych social document, which is 300 pages, but there's also an 89 page version. Um, from what I've heard, they both get the job done, so I would choose whatever fits your schedule. If you have more time, I would say go for the 300 page. There's also a really great MCAT explanation spreadsheet on Reddit, um, which will be linked in my guide that has um, solutions to all the AMC problems and materials um, because a lot of the AMC solutions themselves are pretty sparse. So those were the two major um, sources that I used for my content review phase. For my third party practice full links, I used Blueprint, which was previously called Next Step Test Prep. Um, I definitely recommend them for their experimental passages as well as their really, really thorough explanations for each answer, um, why the correct answer is correct and why the wrong answers are wrong. But there are also free alternatives, which I will discuss on the next slide. And then I talk about UWorld in my MCAT study routine video and walk through how I use it. They have like 2,000 passage-based questions that you can practice with. Um, it's an amazing resource and yeah, check out that video. I use the AMC bundle, which is crucial. I think you really need to buy the bundle with all of the official test prep materials, um, which has practice full length section banks and question packs, and then Anki for active recall, which uh, you can use either Anki or Quizlet, but I personally would recommend Anki. So the MCAT is hard and the MCAT is important but it's also extremely expensive. I calculated the total for all the resources that I use, if you also wanna buy them, and it's about $750. Um, so I wanted to offer some free alternatives for the things that I use that I think would work just fine. I bought the four exam bundle of full lengths from Blueprint, which was $99. I only ended up using um, two out of the three additional exams because the first exam is free, so I don't really recommend buying it necessarily. Um, you could just use one free full length from other third party companies like Altius or the Princeton Review and I think that should work just fine depending on how many exams you want to take. UWorld MCAT is quite expensive, it's $219 for a 90 day subscription, um, but they do have a 7 day free trial. But if you could choose between buying full lengths or buying UWorld MCAT, I would honestly go for UWorld MCAT just for the sheer number of questions and the quality of their explanations. AMC bundle, I just can't really give you an alternative for that. It's the official test prep practice material, so you definitely need to buy at least the full lengths and um, also the section banks. The, the question banks honestly are not really necessary. Also definitely make sure to check that you are eligible for the fee assistance program. As part of this program, you get a reduced fee for MCAT registration and you also get access to all of the um, official prep hub material, so this includes practice exam, the sample test, section bank, question packs, etc. And then I briefly wanted to talk about my CARS practice. So the gold standard, I think, are the AMC CARS question packs and the AMC full lengths. So I said that, you know, the question packs are kind of useless because they're from the old MCAT exam, which were just straightforward, discrete questions. However, the CARS question packs are probably one of the best practice you'll, you'll be getting. Um, although I do know that the AMC is coming out with new CARS practice material, um, but you wanna save these for the last month of prep because they are really your gold standard um, from the people who did write the test. Jack Weston has CARS passages that are free. I also use the Princeton Review Hyper Learning CARS, uh, which could be free if you catch my drift. You can check out the rest of the resources on the slide. Um, they're all kind of meh. like. Ultimately, you really just want to practice in the last month with only AMC materials, but I wouldn't recommend Khan Academy for practice because I think it's a lot more straightforward and easier than the actual CARS questions. 
Diving into some frequently asked questions, how did you decide when to take the MCAT? Um, I touched briefly on this, but I decided to take the MCAT after I'd finished all of my pre-med requirements. I was considering taking it after my sophomore year, but I hadn't taken physics yet, and I knew it would be kind of challenging for me to self-study because I knew physics wasn't my strong suit, so I decided to hold off until after I completed my requirements in my junior year. People who say that you don't really need to take physics, I would sort of push back on that and say that it really depends depends on what exam you get and there's no such thing as like a low yield topic honestly so if you know a course is going to be challenging for you and you want to take that before the MCAT then I think you should so I would say that you should have all of the core pre-med courses under your belt so biochem, physiology, um, organic chemistry, general chemistry and ideally physics but I guess you could self-study that depending on how comfortable you feel with it only subjects that I don't think that you need to take a course in are sociology and psychology. That's pretty self-studyable, um, but I might be biased because I just enjoyed studying for that section more than the others. I will say that it is a pretty memorization-heavy section. You just have to know a lot of definitions, and not only those definitions, but examples of those concepts. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but I don't think you would be learning all of those topics that are covered on the MCAT in your course anyway. You also want to consider when you are going to be applying for medical school. So essentially you can take it one out of three time points. You can take it after a summer of studying in the fall. You could study for the fall semester and then winter break and take it um, in January. And, and then you can take it in the spring, but I wouldn't recommend that because it doesn't give you much wiggle room in case you need to retake. So definitely think ahead and plan. Um, it depends really on if you want to take a gap year or not. So if you want to study over the summer but you don't want to take a gap year, that means you should study the summer after your sophomore year and then take it right at the beginning of junior year. How did you make your study schedule? Um, so I have my free template that will be linked in the guide again. Um, I made a flexible schedule so I only scheduled um, daily tasks about one to two weeks in advance and it's okay if things spill over i thought i was gonna do two chapters a day when i first started content review but i quickly realized that it's not really realistic for me i kept putting things off but on a more macro scale you want to make sure that you're still going to be able to finish the major test prep materials that you have so for example you should probably block in when you're going to do the AMC materials um, when you're going to finish UWorld etc um, and you can check out my schedule again I had everything filled out for you to look at for how long everything took me this is really important for you to hear but one of the hardest things about starting studying for the MCAT is just committing to it and knowing that you are going to be studying for the next few months so whoever needs to hear this Please get off Reddit forums um, and just commit to studying for the next few months. It's okay to use Reddit, of course, it's an amazing resource and it's free. Um, just go in knowing what you are looking for, find it, and then leave. Like, do not go into the rabbit hole of just looking through people's posts. I guarantee you it will not help you that much. What really helped me was making a tracker for what materials I still had to do, um, when I wanted to do them, how many days I had left, how many pages I had left. And again, the whole reason why I compiled this huge guide is so that you don't have to look through all of these posts. We pretty much summarized that everything you need to know that we found from Reddit posts, um, from other people who had taken the MCAT exam and upperclassmen, current medical students, etc. So going into the timeline of how I prepared, I essentially had three phases of studying. The first one was content review, which was about one to two months. Um, you can adjust this for however long you need. And then phase two was third party practice, so I used, again, Blueprint and UWorld MCAT. And then phase three is when you really want to buckle down and do AMC material um, and also review your mistakes. So let's talk about phase one. So I spent about two months doing content review. So this was the Kaplan books, um, the Reddit psych social document. Really the goals here are to set a schedule and commit to it, um, adjust if you need to, if things are taking longer than usual, kind of reassess how long your content review phase is gonna take. This phase is your first pass at content, so don't worry if you don't memorize all of the details yet. Um, you are going to be tested on it later um, when you do the third party practice. But you still want to maintain active recall, so commit to using either Anki, Quizlet, or a Google spreadsheet um, to sort of uh, practice what material you have just learned or covered. 
and make sure that you keep up with the material because if you don't practice active recall, chances are you are probably going to forget a lot of the details that you reviewed. And also during this time, I would recommend taking a diagnostic, if not also starting taking full-length practice exams just to get a sense of what the actual passages and questions are like, as well as um, inform how you should be studying. Um, for example, I was overly focused on minute details and discrete knowledge when there, I realized there was also a lot of application and connecting the dots between concepts involved that I wasn't focusing so much on. This sounds like obvious advice, but if a study strategy is not working for you, stop doing it and adapt because for example, I was taking a ton of handwritten notes. I think I ended up with 300 pages of handwritten notes from my Kaplan books and I never looked back on them. I knew during the time that I was taking them that it wasn't very helpful for me, but I just kept doing it for like the sake of completion. Um, and I think that was just like sort of ridiculous and I don't know why I did that. Um, so if you're thinking about taking handwritten notes, I would say only take notes on things that you are struggling with or are important concepts for you to go back to because it's really not a good use of time to write detailed notes about things that you can google or um, find in your book if you need it later. For more information about what subjects I was studying per day, you can go to my guide again. But essentially, I was aiming for one to two chapters of reading per day. Um, I took notes and then I made Anki cards after I finished each chapter. And then ideally over the weekend, you would use Anki to review the topics that you just learned over the week. But I got so lazy with this and I pushed it off until the last month of my studying. And I ended up having like a thousand bio cards that I never got to. So during the third party practice, this is really a chance for you to get to know the format of the exam as well as how to answer experimentally based passages, um, which are a really huge chunk of the exam. You're going to be iterating through this cycle of testing, adjusting your studying, and then testing again. And of course, you should ideally see improvements in your score. But it is important to note that third party full lengths are not reflective of how you're doing. They are notoriously deflated, especially the Princeton Review and I think Kaplan. Um, so as I said in the beginning, I was scoring in like the 511 to 514. Uh, range on my third party full lengths and then once I started taking my AMC full lengths my score shot up pretty drastically not because I improved but um, because the scores are just not very representative. Finally in phase three um, you're going to be doing AMC material and reviewing your mistakes spreadsheet or Anki deck. So you want to refine your test taking skills here which I will be talking about um, what I learned from this phase and aim to never make the same mistake again. So if you get a question on fast adapting muscle fibers wrong, um, then you should also review slow twitch fibers. If you get a question wrong on a kinematics problem, then you should review all of the kinematics equations. And then as some metric guidelines, um, for your first AMC full length, you should aim to be within five points of your goal score. So if your goal is a 515, um, you wanna score between 510 to 515 on your first exam. This also might give you a sense of whether you want to reschedule or not. Um, you might want to take the AMC full length number two, and if you see some reasonable improvement, then that can inform whether you want to reschedule your test date. By the end of this period, your full length average should capture your target score, um, and ideally you should even have a higher average than your target score just because you might be nervous on test day, there are a lot of factors that are just kind of uncontrollable, so um, being over prepared is always better. During this period, it's really important to make a review spreadsheet with all the things that you get wrong, which brings us into the test taking strategies and improving your score. Um, so reviewing your exams is just as important as taking them and you really want to think critically about your mistakes and why you're making them. As I said, you should have a spreadsheet with all of the questions you get wrong, the concepts they involve, um, why you made those mistakes, and also the correct answer. Um, again. All of these templates can be found in the written guide down below, but as long as you have some system for tracking this, um, color coding, what types of errors you're making, that is super important. Questions that you want to pay special attention to are the ones that you flagged um, and got wrong, and also the ones that you didn't flag and got wrong. These are the questions that you didn't expect to get wrong, but you did. Some other test taking strategies that are surprisingly helpful are process of elimination. Most of the time you're able to narrow down to two answers and then choose between the two. There are are times where I literally don't know the answer but as long as I can narrow down I have a 50-50 chance of getting it right and so this exam is really not only testing your knowledge but also your test taking strategies and abilities.
If you're really stuck on a problem, guess and move on. A lot of the MCAT really has to do with your test taking strategy um, and ability to just get through the exam. When I was first starting out and studying for the MCAT, I would waste so much time on questions I wasn't sure about because I just like could not bring myself to move on and I would just read the answers over and over again um, and not know what to put. So at some point, you really just have to move on. You can get a decent amount of questions wrong and still score very high on each section. So just flag it, move on, and then come back to it later if you have time. When you're taking your practice full lengths, make sure to simulate testing conditions. As I said, the exam is on a computer with a keyboard and mouse, so you might want to buy those. Just cheap keyboard and mouses. Mou mice. <laughs> This ensures that your full length average is actually representative and you can go into the test feeling pretty confident. As you know, the MCAT is a very long exam, so you want to build up your attention span um, and practice active reading. A really common struggle during CARS is that you'll kind of zone out of the passage and have to reread the paragraph, which definitely wastes a lot of time. So really practice active reading, asking yourself questions as you're going along, um, imagining if the author was on a spectrum of opinions, which side would they be on? And as I talked about before, CARS timing is crucial. Do not go over 10 minutes per passage um, because your actual MCAT passages might be longer than you expect. <laughs> may or may not be speaking from personal experience. So as we close, I'm going to tell you about my personal experience after taking the MCAT. I thought I bombed the exam. Like I called my friend and I literally talked to him for two hours about how I think I failed the bio section. I was so distraught. Um, and when I got back my exam, literally every single section was pretty on point with my averages from my full lengths. There was no section score that really stood out to me as like abnormal. Um, so definitely trust your full length averages given that you have been simulating testing conditions. And my personal advice is that you should aim for a full length average that is a few points above your goal score because there's definitely going to be some variation. I really just needed to trust my full length average. Um, after you take the exam, you might feel really bad about your performance because you're only fixated on the things that were really hard and overlooking the things that were super easy and that you definitely got right. Do not void unless something really unusual happened. Um, if there was some emergency and you had to be evacuated from the testing center, maybe I would consider voiding, but otherwise um, I would stick to just having your MCAT scored. Do everything in your control that you are in control of. So visit your test taking location um, just so you don't get lost and you know how long it takes to get there. Don't change up your diet. Don't change up your exercise before the exam. Um, really stick to your routine. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend. Give this video a like, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!